This is Ms. Black. We are finally going to finish Module 14 today with, with Lesson 14H. In this lesson, all it's about is a vocabulary word. So, if you think of everything we've done in this module, we've done a lot. We've graphed circles, we've graphed ellipses, we've graphed hyperbolas, and we've graphed parabolas. And in the previous module, 13, we graphed all the linear equations, the lines. So now I want to put it together and I want to talk about one more definition. We have no work to do, we just got to learn a definition. So let's go to our notes. Okay. These four curves that we have just spent all this time graphing, circle, ellipses, hyperbolas, and parabolas, all come from the same concept. Those graphs come from cutting a cone. So if you look up here at my notes, I have a picture of an ice cream cone. And depending on the way you cut it, will form each of those four graphs. So if you took an ice cream cone and cut it straight across the top horizontally, you would make a circle. If you took an ice cream cone, though, and you cut it from one end to the other diagonally, it would make an ellipse. If you took an ice cream cone and it started at the center of the ice cream cone and cut it diagonally, you would make or form a parabola. And if you took two ice cream cones and lined them up vertically and cut them straight up and down, you would make a hyperbola. So technically speaking, we form those curves in real life by cutting a cross section of an ice cream cone. A cone in math is called a conic. So you can call a circle and ellipse, a parabola and a hyperbola conics because they're all formed by visually cutting a cone a certain way. Now, what I want to finish up with is if you look at your notes, here are seven equations. By now, my goal has been to get you to recognize that you are Michelangelo's or Picasso's. And before you ever go to your graph paper canvas, you should make a decision on what you're graphing. We have talked about all seven of these equations. We should be able to look at them and know, are they going to be lines or conics? And if they're lines, which type of line? Horizontal, vertical, or diagonal? And if they're conics, cones, which one? Circle, ellipse, hyperbola, or parabola? So let's go to the whiteboard, and without doing any work, just looking at these equations, let's make our decisions. Okay, so to finish it up, if you look, ladies and gentlemen, I have seven equations up here. They're all equations. They all have equal signs. Our goal in the last couple of modules, module 13 and 14, is make it a connection. If you're given an equation in math, it makes a picture of something, a graph of something. I expect you to be able to look at that equation and know what you're going to graph before you ever touch the graph paper. Linear equations make pictures of lines. So the first thing you should be able to do is go through and pick out which ones are the linear equations. Your definition of linear from module one is an equation that has exponents of one. So here is a linear equation. Here is a linear equation. Here is your linear equation. X and Y to the first, Y to the first, X to the first. If you are a linear equation, you make a picture of a line. How many types of lines are there? Three. Horizontal, vertical, diagonal. How do you decide which one is which? We talk about it. The variable relates to what axis the line would touch. If you draw a horizontal line, it touches the y-axis. That's why its equation has a y. If you draw a vertical line, it touches the x-axis. Its equation has an x. If you draw a diagonal line, it's going to always touch both axes. That's why its equation has both variables. So I would expect you to look at these three linear equations and know what you're graphing. This has an x and a y, it's going to be a diagonal line. This has a y, 
it's going to be a horizontal line. This equation has an x, it's going to be a vertical line. And then once you know that, you go and proceed to graph them. That was the whole connection in module 13, making a connection between what you're going to graph and the variable. The same thing goes for module 14. We have up there four equations that are not linear. Has an x squared and the y squared. Has an x squared. Has an x squared and the y squared. Has an x squared and the y squared. Those are all equations of conics. That's our new word. These are all conics because technically speaking, if I took an ice cream cone, depending on how I cut it, would form either the circle, the ellipse, the hyperbola, the parabola. So now, you're supposed to be able to look at these four equations and make that decision. Which conic is which? Which one's the circle? Which one's the ellipse? Which one's the hyperbola? Which one's the parabola? So again, one more time. A circle is two curves that come together. It's got to have an x squared. It's got to have a y squared. The plus is going to bring them together. An ellipse is also two curves that come together. You got to have an x squared. You got to have a y squared coming together with a plus. What makes them different is a circle only has one distance to move a radius. Therefore, the denominators of the fractions would be the same number. An ellipse has to move two different distances, A across, B up and down. So its denominators would be different. So everybody look closely. Where is my equation of my circle? I need an x squared plus a y squared. There it is. I know I don't see the denominators. They're understood to be ones. This is my circle. Where is my equation of my ellipse? Right here. Here's an x squared plus a y squared, two curves coming together. But the denominators are different. I'm moving two different distances. This is my ellipse. We said a hyperbola is the opposite. Instead of the two curves coming together, they go apart. So you'll still have an x squared and y squared, but now be connected by subtraction. Which is my equation of my hyperbola? Right here. There's the x squared and the y squared, two curves. The minus means they're going apart. And that leaves our last conic. This equation only has an x squared. When you only have one variable squared, it's only one curve. The only thing we've learned to graph so far that's one curve is a parabola. Once you know what you're going to graph, then that conjures up in your head what you need to do. And that's the most important connection out of both those modules put together, is making sure you realize if I put an equation on the board, you should know what you're going to graph by looking at the connection with the variables. Okay, we're done with most of the graphing. We still have a couple more modules, but it won't be as intense. Have a great day. Thank you.